Hey guys, what is up? Chris here with Cohesive Friendship Unit. Just me today. Uh, we are going to be doing part two of the Death Stranding necklace analysis. Uh, we are going through all six of the equations or uh, ideas represented on Sam's necklace and Death Stranding. Part one covered uh, the first three of those, which were uh, the field equations, reaction to fusion equation, and basically a representation of a scalar field, or like symmetry. This time around, we are going over Schwarzschild radius, a Dirac equation, and uh, quantum entanglement states. Uh, but real quick, before we do that, we are doing a giveaway for Conan Exiles at 800 subscribers. All you have to do is be subscribed. Check out our channel page for more information on that. Without further ado, let's get started. We're going to kick things off with Schwarzschild radius. Uh, this is historically called the gravitational radius. Uh, it's a physical parameter which is used to solve Einstein's field equations, which we covered again in part one of this whole necklace analysis. Uh, basically, anything that has mass has uh, gravity. It, it has a it applies a force to other things with mass. And this equation essentially defines uh, the radius for any given mass that you would need to create a black hole. Uh, so the distance from the center of a sphere such that nothing, not even light, can escape. You could do this for 100 kilograms if you wanted. Uh, it would just be a really small black hole, but you could do this math and figure out exactly how small you would have to crunch down a 100 kil kilogram object to create a black hole. The density of mass, so like the amount of mass in a smaller volume, uh, allows for a larger radius. Essentially, the more mass you have, the uh, larger radius you can create. They're correlated. Uh, the more mass of an object, the larger the radius of the black hole you'll create. Kind of a fun fact, you've probably heard of like supermassive black holes, stellar black holes, etc. Those are all classified with Schwarzschild's radius. And in Death Stranding, I think it's pretty obvious that this could definitely be used for void outs. Uh, this, uh, they, they talk about void outs which leave craters, and these craters appear to be devastating, destroying everything. Also, craters imply a sphere, uh, and they talk about triggering void outs. It seems uh, you might be able to create a temporary but small black hole, a very controlled black hole with a radius that can destroy everything within that radius because it's a black hole. Not even light can escape it. So that might be where this equation comes into play, where this idea comes into play in the Death Stranding universe. And next we're going to be talking about the Dirac equation. And basically... Uh, this talks about the spin state for particles like electrons or quarks where uh, parity is a symmetry and basically what that means is that every particle and we'll just use an electron for example uh, every particle has a symmetric mirrored particle with it so an electron would have a positron like a twin in the universe with exactly the opposite uh, charge and this points towards an existence of a new type of matter called antimatter. And perhaps what's most significant is the interaction between, again, going with electrons, electrons and positrons is where you can see the smallest instant of time. Uh, a photon's interaction with electrons, where the electron absorbs the photon, uh, that is a point in which a photon gets destroyed and then when a photon is re-emitted, that is when a photon is created, is the smallest instance of observable time uh, where, again, photons are destroyed and created again using, uh, using antimatter and the destruction of antimatter. And in Death Stranding, to me, this 
seems like a fairly obvious way to integrate the time falls into the game. Again, time falls, they are rainstorms where if the rain touches you, uh, you appear to age faster, but it, it's not like you aging, it's very local. For example, if a drop of rain hits your hand, only where the drop hits will you actually age. And just because this equation kind of describes the smallest observable amount of time, uh, it seems like there may be some manipulation of this theory, this equation, this idea, the math of this, where you can take that smallest unit of time when the rain hits your skin and actually uh, manipulate it using some kind of physics. So that might be the best explanation for time falls. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the quantum entanglement state. This one is maybe a little more weird to think about, but we're going to do our best. This even stumped Einstein himself originally. So if we consider uh, two particles, which again will go with spin states, you can have a spin state up or a spin state down just for simplicity's sake. Uh, if you have two particles and you are to measure one of the spin states as spin up, the other one will be spin state down. Uh, these two are these two particles are tied to the point where you don't even have to measure the second one. If you measure the first one, you'll automatically know the answer of the second one. Uh, this relationship will always hold, meaning measuring one of the particles will with certainty tell you the spin state of the other particle. And this is the idea of entangled particles, that if two particles are entangled, they will be in opposite indeterminate states until measured. And what that means is uh, when you have these two particles, before you measure them, you don't know if one is uh, spin state up and the other is spin state down. All you know is that they are opposite spin states. Uh, and until you actually take that measurement, you won't actually know. Uh, but once you measure one, you can simply take the opposite state to know the other. And what's kind of important about this uh, is the idea is you can essentially uh, take an observation or a measurement of one particle anywhere in the universe and wherever its entangled particle is, you could affect the state of the other entangled particle regardless of the speed of light. So if I'm on Earth and I measure a particle uh, that is in a spin state up and it has an entangled particle 50 million light years away at that exact instant that I measure the first particle as up the second particle will be measured as down so the implications are you can actually uh, influence matter in the universe at faster than the speed of light which is interesting and strange and still is a bit of a mystery. And the the interesting thing with uh, how I think Death Stranding could be involved is uh, a little less specific than what we were going into, but more the strands. I think the strand could represent kind of an entangled state. Uh, we look at Higgs and Cliff. I think those two are entangled in one another and that strand connects them you see strands all throughout the overworld i think those strands are connecting two things maybe not necessarily particles but things in a sort of entangled state and uh not sure how the measuring or an obs observation will necessarily determine the effects of the other but it is just kind of interesting to think about uh, I do think that the, the strands are kind of where quantum entanglement state best fits in. Well, that's it, guys. Those are all six of the equations on Sam's necklace, or not even equations, more ideas, also representations of ideas, uh, and how they might fit in in the Death Stranding universe. Obviously, the more trailers and stuff we find out, the more we can do analysis, which is kind of fun. But let me know what you guys think uh, about this video, about this little mini series. Uh, we're definitely not done with Death Stranding here on the channel. Um, so yeah, that's all for me, guys. I will catch you guys next time.